Today, we're talking about accessories, and accessories specifically, in this case, for my folding Hawkeye number 2A Brownie camera. Um, this camera used 116 film. I did an extensive video on it a few days ago, but today I'm gonna to talk about accessories. The biggest thing that I need as a working photographer is the ability to have filters for the front of this camera. I like neutral density filters that allow me to have very long exposures and still be wide open on the f-stop. Also, I may wanna put a red filter in front of this. I may wanna put a yellow filter in front of this. But as you can imagine, a camera from 1926, it's hard to find proper filters. Now, they are available on eBay. They come in little cases like this. And it's important, this is why I said in my previous post, that it's important to try to find instruction manuals for your cameras, because if you find the instruction manuals, you can find a list of all of the accessories that were ever made for that camera and what the nomenclature for that accessory is. So for this camera, which is the A version, the 116, it uses number three filters. But just to show you how crazy that is, if it was the number two, not the number A2, 2A, but just number two, it would use number eight filters. So I have no idea how anybody's supposed to remember that. That's why it's so important to always get your instruction manuals. So what this told me is that there were a handful of filters made for this particular camera in 1926. So I found some on eBay literally for pennies. And the problem with these filters from this time period is that they've all kind of degraded. Can you see that? You can see how bad this is a yellow filter, how, what's really left of the yellow. But what's interesting about these filters is they're really well made and they have a retaining ring on the inside in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that retaining ring out, which allows you to take out the glass. Now what's interesting is the filters in these cameras have a piece of glass on the top, a piece of glass on the bottom, and they have a yellow gel or a red gel, depending on what the filter is, in between. The gel is what's degraded. What I've come up with is the solution for me is to buy filters like this, to take the glass apart, clean it, and then cut down whatever size filter I want to put on the inside. So in, in one case, you can see right here, I've already cut down a neutral density filter. This right here was cut down to match this piece of glass. And this is a six and a half stop neutral density filter. By sandwiching that between the two pieces of glass, I've now created modern filters for a camera from 1926. So let me walk you through how we do that. Okay, so as I said, there's a little tiny retaining ring here in the front. Um, all you have to do, if you've got a, a caliper, you can remove this that way, but I'm just putting my finger in here and just loosening this retaining ring all the way and then pulling out the glass. And you can see there are two pieces of glass here with a really nasty piece of yellow in the middle. Pull out a razor blade and give it just a little cut. That's all you need, just that. And it breaks apart. Now you can use the razor blade to clean the glass, use some good Windex and get it nice. And now you've got two pieces of glass to sandwich a filter in between and screw back into these mounts. It's a really great way to be able to get this set up fast. All right, so that's how I build my filters. And so I'm slowly building a complete filter set. I'm building you know, a 44A that'll give me panchromatic to orthochromatic. I've got my neutral density filters. I'm gonna probably build a 25 red. I'll probably build a number eight, a, a, a yellow. And that way I've got an assortment of filters that I can use on this cameras for what I want. Yesterday, I also talked about taking 120 uh, film and making it fit inside of this camera. And one of the tips that I gave everybody was using either two little pieces of tape or two little pieces of paper and putting them on the end like this before you plug the adapter in. And I came up with the solution because I don't want to be carrying this big roll of tape with me everywhere I go. So what I did is I took an old uh, 116 metal spool and I just wound like two, three feet of the tape onto this and I throw this in the bag. This now becomes my tape dispenser when I'm out in the field so I can pull off exactly what I need and I can always add more. And I kind of think that it's cool that I've got one of the original 116 medals in my bag. Thank you very much for listening. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Go shoot some film.